Hello everyone and welcome to round 8 of the 2018 Grand KHS Classic. Now if you're confused about the title of the video, uh, it's uh, it's uh, because uh, during the live coverage uh, Peter Leko was actually telling some uh, cool stories about uh, about Bobby Fischer. So if you're interested in hearing those, if you like Bobby Fischer, do check it out. Uh, you can find the, the, the recording of the entire uh, round 8. Uh, on Chess24's uh, YouTube channel, so you know, feel free to check it out. You can just uh, rewind to the stories if you don't want to watch the entire thing. Uh, but uh, as there are some very interesting stories, I'm, I'm sure you would all uh, enjoy hearing them very much. So, uh, about this game. Uh, Fabiano Caruana versus Levon Aronian. So it's a very important round for both of them. Uh, Fabiano is still in the lead, uh, so half a point b uh, ahead of Carlsen and Nikita Vityugov, and a full point ahead of Levon Aronian. So if uh, Aronian wins this game, uh, he, he, he will be tied with Fabiano Caruana. Not in first place, as I'm sure maybe Vityugov or Carlsen can win their games, uh, but uh, can definitely uh, become a contender for, for first place. So a very important game for both of them. And uh, it's uh, it's very interesting uh, what uh, openings uh, they decide to go for, especially what Aronian decides to go for, and uh, you know it, it perhaps raises some questions. Uh, and before we check out the game, uh, I do we do have some very interesting photos from round eight. So let's just uh, dive straight into them. <clears throat> Here we have a nice photo of Maxime Vachier Legrave uh, arriving uh, at at round eight. Uh, here we have uh, Magnus Carlsen arriving with Peter Nielsen Hein, uh, his uh, his coach and trainer. Uh, it's a bit blurry, but you know that's because they're walking. Uh, here we have uh, an excellent photo of Levon Aronian uh, munching at what appears to be a piece of bread. Uh, maybe it could be a cake, but uh, I don't think he would be having cake before before a game with uh, with Fabiano. Uh, so here we have an excellent photo of uh, of the Frenchman. Here is <laughs> the deadly stare of Maxime Vachier Le Grave. Tal would definitely approve of this. And uh, here we have uh, uh, what what are you looking at for <laughs> a stare by by world champion Magnus Carlsen. Uh, and here we have two two photos uh, of today's game. Here is uh, a, a nice close up of Levon Aronian uh, and a nice close up of Fabi. So. I do hope you enjoyed those. Uh, let's check out the game. Uh, so, like I said, a very important game for both of them. So it's very interesting what they decided to play. Uh, e4, e5, knight to f3, knight c6, and bishop to b5. So, okay, the Ruy Lopez uh, seems to be uh, a standard uh, now at, at every tournament. Uh, knight to f6, the Berlin defense. Uh, we have castles, knight captures on e4, uh, the Rio gambit, rook to e1. Uh, knight to d6, attacking the bishop on b5, and now uh, knight captures on e5. Uh, bishop to e7, not allowing any discoveries, and now bishop back to f1. Uh, knight captures, rook captures, and uh, Aronian castles. Uh, d4, uh, bishop to f6, attacking the rook, rook to e2, uh, rook to e1, sorry. Uh, we have knight to f5, and now uh, d5. Uh, rook to e8, offering a trade of rooks, bishop to d3, rook captures, queen captures, and now queen to e7 by Aronian, offering a trade of queens. Uh, so, queen captures on e7, knight captures on e7, and here is a very interesting position. Uh, basically, all of the all of the moves uh, up until this point were played instantaneously, uh, and this move as well by F Fabiano. So here, uh, although white has a couple of options, you could go uh, c4, maybe defend this pawn, you could go bishop to e4 to defend it, uh, but Fabi goes for the most principled move, uh, d6, and it is uh, the engine's top recommendation, so uh, definitely a prepared line by Fabi. Uh, the idea is you don't want uh, you don't want to protect the pawn on d5 by playing d6. You you force black to capture it and to mess up his own pawn structure. So pawn captures and now knight to a3. This knight is coming either to b5 or c4, and from there uh, it will be it will be a very strong piece. Uh, black will not be able to to protect both of his double pawns, uh, nor does black want to do so because you kind of do have to develop this light square bishop to develop the rook, and these pawns are kind of in the way. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be terrible for black if white could create some sort of a blockade, you know, to maybe maybe put a knight here and then uh, and then protect it. So the bl black really <laughs> would be terrible there. Uh, so d5 immediately, knight to b5, and now d6. Uh, it would seem 
uh, d6 to start develop developing your pieces, uh, you have to give the pawn back. Uh, it would be a pretty terrible idea to go something like a6 with the idea that after knight to c7 you can play rook to b8 and you keep all of the pawns, the d5 pawn is protected, uh, but then white has this bishop to f4 and then this rook will be uh, a target for many discoveries, so black will not have a lot of fun here. So after knight b5, d6, giving back the pawn, uh, knight captures and now uh, knight to c6. Uh, bishop to f4 and now bishop to e6, developing uh, developing the bishop and not not allowing uh, white to exchange a bishop for a uh, knight for a bishop. Uh, so here knight captures on b7. Uh, also an idea could be to play uh, bishop captures on b2, but uh, then you have rook to b1, uh, bishop to d4 and after knight captures, rook captures and rook captures, uh, you don't really gain anything here. So no no reason to capture the b2 pawn. So after bishop to f4 instead bishop to e6, like we said, knight captures on b7, knight to b4, uh, and here knight to c5. Uh, an interesting but uh, a, a bad move would be a3, uh, because now you get bishop captures on b2, attacking the rook, rook to b1, now cap knight captures on b3, defending the bishop, uh, and also def attacking the bishop on f4. And uh, uh, now uh, there's also a problem of the a3 pawn actually being under attack. So uh, you don't really uh, you don't really want to capture anything. If you capture the knight, then you lose the a3 pawn. If you capture... Uh, there, there's really no nothing to capture here. So white would have to go bishop to d6, still leave all of these pieces attacked. Uh, and after black grabs a pawn here, then you would have rook captures. And after uh, knight to d1... Uh, it would actually be a, a, a great position for black, as black would be up, up, up a pawn. Uh, so, after knight to b4, knight to c5, now we have uh, bishop captures on b2, rook to b1, and now knight captures on d3. c captures on d3, and now uh, bishop to d4, attacking the knight on c5, uh, offering white to capture the bishop on e6, uh, but that would, only, uh, that would only improve black's pawn structure, so no reason in doing that. Bishop to e3. Uh, offering a trade of bishops, but we have bishop captures on c5. Uh, bishop captures and now uh, this uh, this tricky d4 move. And uh, basically, uh, now it's a it's a rook and opposite color bishop send game with the with the almost exact same pawn structure. Uh, there is really nothing to do here. So bishop captures on a7. Uh, one last one last try but it's the best move definitely of course you can't capture because this leads to checkmate uh, so instead after bishop to a7 bishop to a2 attacking the rook and now rook to b8 this comes with check rook captures uh, bishop captures and now bishop to b1 bishop a7 bishop a2 and a repetition of moves uh, after bishop to b8 uh, the 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 players agree to a draw but uh, if you look at this a very nice uh, completely symmetrical structure. Okay, it'd be better if the pawns were up for one square, but you know, uh, very nice. So uh, I I don't think this I don't think there ever well not ever but in this tournament I don't think there was a game played that was this this equal. Uh, this is like uh, the embodiment of equality. This is I mean the game was completely equal uh, from from move one until until the end. So. I mean, it's a great preparation by by Fabiano. He's re really showing uh, some, uh, you know, amazing chess skills. Uh, but it's a it's a weird uh, move by Levon because he really had to win this game to maybe try and win the tournament. Uh, why, you know, what could be the reason that he decided not to do so? It could be his poor performance in the candidates tournament. He doesn't want to do anything crazy. You know, just wanna uh, wants to get his rating back, maybe get back in into the world top ten, uh, and. Yeah, may, yeah, maybe he just wants to play a nice tournament and then start uh, going for uh, winning tournaments again. As he's the defending champion uh, of last year's Grand Chess Classic, so it's it's kind of strange uh, uh, that he decided not to not to play uh, for a win this game. Even though, yeah, okay, you do have a black against Fabiano, but uh, Levon always always plays for the win and always tries to create something. So, okay, maybe it's a weird uh, weird choice of openings, but uh, although although it appears to be a, a drawish line and, and a boring opening for me, uh, on that level, on a, on a 2800 and beyond level, you know, there could actually be a ton, tons of chances here. Uh, but okay, uh, I did prepare the final standings, uh, not the final, standings after round 8, so here they are. Uh, 
Uh, Caruana still in first place with five and a half points. Uh, Carlson and Vitugo uh, only half a point behind. Uh, then we have uh, Maxim Vashiro Lagrav and Levan Aronen with four and a half. Bluebaum with four. Naidic with three. Anand also with three. Ho Yifan also with three. And then Georg Meyer in last place with two and a half points. So uh, a lot of a lot of interesting games have been played so far, and it seems that uh, Georg Meyer, Ho Yifan, and uh, Vishwanathan Anand are still without a win in this tournament. Uh, maybe I've missed someone, but I don't think so. Yeah, uh, three of them uh, are still without. Uh, are without wins, so they will have round nine still to play and maybe maybe achieve a victory. Uh, and I did prepare uh, the pairings of the last round. Here we have Ho Yifan versus Naidic, uh, Eleven Aronian versus Bluebaum, Vitugo versus Caruana, uh, Anand versus Carlson, and uh, Maxim Vashir Legra versus Georg Meyer. So a lot of things can happen in in the final round, and uh, you know. It's interesting that uh, Caruana, if he wants to win the tournament, he has he has to play uh, one more excellent game against Vitugo, who is in second place, and Vitugo has the white pieces. And Carlson, if he wants to win the tournament, uh, you know he he has to do something against Vishwanathan Anand with the black pieces. Uh, definitely not the simplest of tasks. Uh, so yeah, pretty much anything can happen here. Uh, even I believe uh, in some weird way. In some, yeah, okay, since, yeah, a lot of calculation here, but I think a lot of people can still win this tournament. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, I didn't calculate it, but maybe maybe even uh, Vashir Lagarv and Aronian both still have chances. So yeah, uh, those were the standings and the pairings of the last round. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed the photos, I do hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, I would like to thank uh, David Turnbull, uh, Free Will and Dave, uh, and uh, Jonathan Delanoy for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with uh, probably at least uh, one more game from the final round of the Grand Gate Chess Classic. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.